Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make customized cardstock miniatures. Uh, we're going to be using Hero Forge's custom miniature creation screen. Now I have special permission to do this to show you guys. Um, however, just keep in mind uh, that this is copyrighted materials. Everything, even every little item, is copyrighted and protected by Hero Forge. Um, so uh, it's acceptable for your private use to be doing this, but you definitely cannot do this to sell any of these things to somebody else or for that matter to even put on YouTube. Um, however, I do have special permission to get this done for you. All right, so what we're gonna do, first you create an account. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, it's a very straightforward process. Um, you can select you know the race and the head and you can basically customize every little thing you need for it um, and once you get to uh, the thing that you like and this is my main character Raziel who is a uh, for those that know me that's been my tag since I was like 12 uh, that's what I always go by uh, anyway so um, what we're gonna do is you want to design your mini you want to get him to him or her rather to the position that you are going to uh, want your mini to face now uh, generally you'd probably want the face um, facing you however if you wanted more of like the shield showing which I think I might um, I'm gonna have it set like this now uh, you may be zoomed in so you want to make sure you're zoomed all the way out and for our purpose uh, printing we would actually want our bases however for this purpose we're going to click and turn our base off you don't want that alright so we're gonna take a quick screenshot and we're just gonna click this right here I'm gonna save that file I am using um, Firefox may be a little different for Google Chrome or uh, Internet Explorer, whatever you use, um, but I'm sure you know how to navigate your own uh, web browser. Alright, so here is my saved screenshot, so I'm going to right click on that, and we're going to edit this with GIMP. Now if you're not familiar with GIMP, uh, it's basically very similar to uh, Adobe Photoshop. However, it's a free program, so it's not going to cost you anything. It's uh, super simple to learn, and uh, I just enjoy working with it. So when I when I do things, I usually edit them in GIMP. It's not as powerful as Adobe, uh, but hell, for free, you really can't complain. Okay, so anyway, so once you open that up in the program, um, basically you see these little gray and light gray checkers. This is transparency, so this will never show up in a picture. Uh, however, we have our little 3, 3D render, uh, which is now a two-dimensional image. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut this picture out. And how I'm going to do that, right here is a fuzzy select tool. And if I just click anywhere within this picture, you will see these little dancing lines. Now this is everything that's selected. However, if you look at the top of the rectangle, you'll notice that we actually have the entire window selected and not our picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to select and hit invert. And now you notice the little squiggly lines have disappeared around our picture. And that tells us that we have the actual image selected. And if we would just hit control, uh, what is that, control cut, cut, control X, um, we would cut this picture out. And we know we have it selected if your picture disappears. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new document. Now let's make sure we take these pixels and convert it to inches. And um, I'm just going to use a standard legal size paper, which I believe is 8.5 by well, 12, basically. They have it right there. Okay, the more important thing is we, we don't want to lose any detail of our miniatures. So what we're going to do here is, you see how it says 72 pixels per inch? We're going to want to change that. Now, uh, 
72 is super, super low. Uh, I usually put mine to like 350. 350 is a really good range. I haven't, I, I don't really notice any extra detail uh, past this range with my printer. However, um, some printers might be better than mine and you might want to go higher than that. But 350 is super high quality. It, it's not going to make much of a difference past that, I wouldn't think. All right, anyway. So we're going to keep it as red, green, and blue spectrum. And then here is our background color. And if you notice right here, here's my toolbox. If you notice right here, this is my foreground, and it's black, and my background is white. So if I hit OK, it's going to create us a white picture. Now what I'm going to do is double click on that window to expand it. Um, and then we're going to right click in this, in this column or in this window, I'm sorry, and we're going to hit paste. And what that does is paste our little miniature in a new field, in our, in our new document that we just created. And if you notice over here in our layers, it'll say floating selection. And our floating selection will have these squiggly little lines on them again. So we're going to right click on this, and we're going to add this, or just click on to new layer. Now all of a sudden, our image becomes whole. So let's take our move tool up here and let's just move it to the top corner right there. Okay, so before we go any further we want to make sure that we're sized correctly. Now this mini should be um, about for, for, for my miniatures I have them in at one in was that one and a quarter I believe from foot to the top of the head now since I have a sword that's gonna expand a little bit longer but an easy way for me to check that is I'm gonna come over here and hit scale and once that scale opens up let me hit it again there we go uh, you'll actually see that my height is 1.7 so it's a little higher and that may be with the sword but what I'm going to do now is just scale it down just ever so slightly so I'm going to go back to 1.5 and if you notice that scaled it just ever so tiny hit scale um, that's the difference That was not what I meant to do, so I'm going to undo that cut. And then here we have two options. We could either duplicate this as it is, or we can actually pause right here and go in and color this mini. Um, I think I want to color mine, so I'm going to pause this video and I'll be right back after I'm done coloring it and then we'll proceed. Alright, uh, this is good enough for now anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do now is control and scroll out. Here's my painted um, mini. So what I'm going to do is over here I'm going to duplicate layer and then have my move tool selected and what I'm going to do is just drag him so the squares touch. Boom. Just like that. Okay. So now right here is a flip tool. So click this and now you see my cursor has um, underneath it a, a little arrow that goes left and right. So all that's saying is if I just click and then pull right and let go, my mini is completely flipped. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit just to make sure that I'm uh, aligned correctly, and I believe I am. So if I select none, I now have Raziel um, colored. So it's not too bad. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to merge. So I'm going to take this, this top layer 
and then I'm going to merge down. So now what that does is I have one layer of one image. So now Raziel has a mirrored image of himself. So let's check our scale again. I'm just going to click scale. Click on the picture. It's 1.654, which is measuring from the bottom of my foot to the tip of my sword. So that's uh, probably good enough for what I'd like it for. Let's go to print preview, just so I can see what it's going to look like on paper. It just kind of helps me better visualize, and that's going to be correct. Okay, so what I'm going to do from this point is you can either, if you have monsters or minions or anything like that, what you could do is duplicate this layer once again. Make sure you're on your move tool and then just drag it over. Okay, so like say if you had um, skeletons or zombies that you just wanted to create a horde of, uh, that's how you would do it. You would just duplicate the layer, drag and bring it over some, duplicate, drag, bring over, duplicate, drag, bring over, blah blah blah. Uh, and then it would fill your entire page and then from that point you would print um, unfortunately I think I am out of color ink um, I'm going to print it anyway just to see by some chance that it's going to print um, but I'm fairly certain that I'm low on color um, so I'm gonna pause this and I will be right back with you after this is done printing. Okay, so just like I thought, uh, I didn't have enough color ink to print it, so it was very pale. So what I did was just printed it out in grayscale, so you could see what I'm doing. Uh, and all we're going to do is just crop this out. Um, all right. So that's this is our image, okay? And what we have to do is fold this directly down the center. You want this piece to be directly in the center of the uh, the mini. So what I have here. And I'm just going to cut a piece out, and this is just cardstock. Um, if you have white cardstock, you could obviously just print this onto the cardstock and save yourself a step. Uh, however, I didn't. So, what I'm going to do is I'm lining my shield up because that's where it's going to bend, okay? So, we're going to take and glue this on. We're going to let this dry for a little bit, and while we're doing that, we're going to cut out the base. Now, um, if you have uh, a one inch base, you would cut out a one inch tile. Uh, I don't use a one inch tile anymore. Um, I use a one and a quarter, just because when you're using actual minis, like 3D minis and you have a bunch of them on the table next to each other uh, it gets cluttered and they bump into each other and the weapons bump into each other and it's very aggravating very annoying so I decided to not do that anymore so you can go the Wylock method where you would cut your own base out out of foam and you would basically score it along the line not going all the way through and basically you're cutting a slot for your mini to slide in uh, and then you would 
you would decorate your base and flock it or whatever else you're going to do to it. Uh, in order to do that, you have to, if this is your mini, you have to have an actual tab at the bottom. So, um, I'm just going to cut this out really fast just so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright. So, you would score your piece, you would insert the little tab into the base, and if it was all nice and pretty and colored, and I actually took time to show you the correct way, um, it, would, it would be done, okay? But I wanted mine to actually stand out, so I am going to actually cut my all this white space away from my mini. All right, so here is our mini cut out. And again, sorry, it is not colored. Uh, <clears throat> I have my little one with me and he's sleeping, so I cannot go run to the store and be, buy ink. Uh, but anyway, uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and color the edges of this uh, cardstock, just to make sure I don't have any of the actual white showing actually go back and paint it or while you're in your gimp if you think ahead you can color that in So we have our mini, our customized mini from Hero Forge, paper stock, card stock. We insert that into our base. And then like I said, when you could go and you would add EVA foam, I am mean, sorry, uh, PVA glue uh, to the foam core, uh, flock it however you'd like, or um, leave it plain, plain black, whatever you do to your bases. Uh, however, that is a customized cardstock mini. Unpainted or uncolored in GIMP because I was a moron and did not make sure I had colored ink when I started this project. Anyway, guys, thank y'all for watching. I hope this helps y'all. Uh, please go and support Hero Forge. They were kind enough to allow me to show you how to do this. Um, once again, uh, it's okay for private use, but you cannot use this material for commercial. Uh, I am not monetized my account, so I'm not making any money off of these videos. Uh, I just thought it was really cool. This is how I do my a lot of my custom minis. I have a bunch of monsters and tavern people and stuff like that that I can't find uh, easy or cheap enough and I could basically customize them how I want and what's really cool is you could change their poses so if I didn't want this normal battle stance or if I wanted like an army of knights I can go in and just change their battle stance and just print a bunch of them off uh, all at different different angles but have the same kind of soldier in the same armor but at different battle stance so anyway, again, thank y'all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this, uh, and let me know what you think.